Hello, welcome to another tutorial. Um, today, I'll be teaching you how to do this here with the gears. Uh, I'll be taking you through the modeling, rigging, and animation process of everything. And by the end, you should have some smooth animation like this, where you see the teeth are actually connecting to each other. So, first thing you might notice about these gears is that they look a little bit strange. So, let me just explain why that is. Um, it's from the Empire teaser trailer for a Bionicle short film. Um, I'm only participating in helping it, um, but here's basically what it looks like. The gears here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this little teaser trailer here because this is just the gears. Yeah, so, I took a picture of those gears here. You can tell they're directly from YouTube. Um, yeah, so we'll just drop these into Blender. So what we do to do that is we minimize all this here. I have a file here. It already has the image here. So you can either hit N, um, just close some of these here. Um, background image, add image. Yeah, that takes a while. So, uh, fast way I'm doing, I'm doing it is just find the image. And drag it in. So now you can see we already have the image here. And I'm just going to make sure it's at top view only. So now if we go top view, and tap 5. Uh, there we go. There's the image. So now we can get an idea of how that works. So, um, to make this a little easier, I'm going to use a add on. So under user preferences, add ons. If you just type in uh, extra, we get this add mesh extra objects, which is under um, add mesh, of course. You go like this, you know, backspace that add mesh. Here it is. So just click that little checkbox, and now we have that extra objects there. So shift A, mesh, extra objects, gears, and just a gear. Simple way to make a gear, a lot faster, and a lot of time saved. So, uh, I didn't actually take time to count all these teeth here. Um, nine, six, seven. So there's about, yeah, there's quite a few of them teeth on there. But for this, I'm only going to put ten. So number of teeth, ten. And then you get a few options here. You can just play around with those settings there. Get something you like. But for me, it's mostly this one here, the addendum, to get the length of the spikes and pressure angle, which basically you can see the end of the spike there, the teeth, what they look like. So let's play around with those a little bit and that's about how it should look. And then you know, if you need to you can adjust the number of teeth. Less teeth the bigger the teeth look. More teeth the bigger the teeth look. Okay, I'm gonna stick with ten. And now what we're gonna do is if you rotate your view a little bit you can see here time to edit mode. These two loops are not connected. So, uh, I know there's been a few tutorials on the internet showing the new Blender B mesh, uh, but today I'll be actually showing you uh, a way to utilize it. So, they just show you, some of them show you what the features are. I'll be showing you it um, in an actual situation. So, B mesh is in Blender 2.63 plus, and the way you can tell you have that one is splash screen here, 2.63. So what we do now is, since we're in this, we have this version of Blender, we type in bridge, or bridge to edge loops, and we just click that there, two of the edge loops have now been bridged. So that's one really neat feature of B-Mesh. So, um, since the modeling is pretty easy, straight, straightforward, uh, I won't be talking too much about it. If you watch any of my other tutorials or already have some modeling experience, uh, you should know what to do. Uh, yeah, so what I'll be doing is just basically talking about beam mesh while I model these gears. So what beam mesh is is um well it depends on if you're a, a artist, blender artist, or if you are a um a coder. So if you're a coder, uh what beam mesh could be for you is it's a new API as well as um, 
it's it replaces the old edit mesh code. So if you're ever ever thinking of helping out the Blender Foundation, good thing to know is that V mesh is basically how you edit your mesh now. And yeah, so it just replaces edit mesh code and it's a bunch of new features. Um, for an artist, V mesh is basically um, uh, before I talk about this, I'm just going to show you a quick another example of VMesh, which is this knife tool here. Because if I hit um, Control R, you can see it doesn't allow me to add an edge loop. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is, but uh, what we can do instead is hit, just hit K. This brings up the knife tool, and just by clicking around here, uh, left clicking, you can easily make cuts through this. Let's try a little bit cleaner cut there. Okay, so basically you just cut a hole in the mesh. And it will kind of cut right through it. Um, yeah, it's a little difficult to use at first. As you can see, it it is very difficult to use. Uh, but in time, you know, it, it'll be a little easier. Uh, excuse me, I have a bug on my monitor. I'm just going to pause this for a minute, figure out why this is not working. Okay, I think the reason why it wasn't working there is because I was in wireframe mode. So, if we go into solid mode, we can probably use it a little bit easier. Which is just so once again, K, and just left click. And by the way, you get a whole bunch of commands down here showing you what it does. So just left click, we can rotate as normal. And then we hit enter, and we have a nice edge loop there. It's a little crooked, so we can do a size on the X to zero. And then we go, so control E, head slide, at about there. Okay, so, um, back to what B mesh exactly is to the artist. What it means to the artist is basically, um, it's basically a bunch of awesome tools that you can uh, kind of model faster with, it. like the uh, knife tool I showed you there and the bridge. Uh, the only exception with the bridge tool is that both edges must have the exact same uh, vertice or edge count, any more or any less, and it cannot bridge those two edge loops. Which is, yeah, so that's one thing good to keep in mind. So, yeah. So for developer, it's basically just new tools to uh, code Blender with. And to the artist, it's a bunch of awesome new tools. So, yeah, just finishing up this here. And, yeah, you should be able to follow along with this. Pretty simply, if you know aim, uh, how to use Blender, but it's basically just blocking out everything, making it look proper, which is basically how you model everything in Blender, block it out, make it look nice. So what we're going to do now is select this here, extrude, scale. Uh, while holding down Control, it's just snapping. Uh, we can go in by two increments, that should be good. Do the same with the bottom here. Two increments. And then what we'll do again is use this uh, bridge tool, which if we hit space, it's already selected for us. Uh, and I forgot to uh, duplicate this here. Uh, if we just hit Control L, it'll select everything that's linked to this object. So Shift D, X, turn along the X axis. And there we go, we got all but one gear finished. Um, almost forgot about this one here. Sorry about that, my screen recorder just quit again. Um, yeah, so, you can bridge those two edge loops, and you go a little faster. Yeah. So, yeah, these gears are pretty easy to make.
and so there we go we have some really good looking gears uh, so what we'll do now is we'll take these and smooth shading what we'll do is we'll add an edge split modifier so it doesn't have those really bad looking edges there and I believe we can link the modifier which is control L link modifier so now they all have the same edge split modifier uh, but they are independent it just links modifiers I believe Okay, so uh, with that done, what we want to do now is make sure that the origin point of these gears are in the very center. So what we'll do is uh, Control Shift Alt C and Origin to Geometry, and this is basically just for the animation purpose. So yeah, they're already at the center, which is good. So what we'll do now is to rig these. Uh, to rig them, what we'll do is Shift A and why it is I added an empty. An empty is uh, basically an empty object. It doesn't render because it has no geometry to it. So it's it's good for placeholders and things like this. So what we'll do is under constraints here, we'll add a copy rotation of the um, it's flickering on me here. So I'll just type in uh, empty. Which I did. Install proper, and then we'll just copy that and paste them into these. Copy rotation. Just hit Control V. Uh, control C, and Control V for copy, paste. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now, if we rotate this, you see that they don't rotate proper. So what we need to do is, uh, first of all, just get this background image out of there. We don't need it now. What we can do is invert these, like uh, certain ones we can invert on the Z axis. This way, when we rotate this, they ro rotate the opposite way. And one thing I also found that might help is world to um, local. Because if I remember correctly, when I tried testing this out, it had a few problems later on. Yeah, so you can also. Because you can see that when you rotate this, it just rotates all over the place. You can add a uh, limit rotation on the X and Y. So now if we rotate it, it only rotates around the Z. So there you go. That's the gears right there. And while we're at it, we might as well add a material. And for this material, we can just go something like this. And now if we select these two gears and the one with material last, we can hit Control L, link materials, so now they all have the same material. Um, and the lighting is also fairly basic. Uh, you can probably just use a sun lamp. Bring this up. Um, and the camera, just go to top view, hit Control Alt, numpad zero. And I believe that's all it takes for the gears. Might have to play around with the lighting a little bit, maybe turn it down to 0.5. Now it's a little more subtle. So there you go. That is basically how you make the, make these gears, make gears and rig them. To animate it, you just you know insert uh, keyframe, then you go down timeline, rotate somewhat, insert another keyframe and yeah, they'll rotate. So that's basically making gears in Blender, freaking them, and animating them. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. And uh, thanks for watching.